won't be that natural because uh, I'm just going to start out by saying, Jake E, <laughs> it's good to finally <laughs> do this. Uh, we've been talking about this for a while, and now you're here. So thanks for doing this. Yeah. Welcome. Uh, thank you. And unfortunately, I am not there. I would have loved to be where you are, but well, it is what it is. Technology is the key. We can meet each other anyway, right? Well, we've talked about that before. I mean, uh, has, does Syra have any concrete plans to come back to the States anytime soon? Yeah, we have, and we will come back. Um, that damn pandemic came in between, but uh, I don't know if you saw this, but we have actually started a GoFundMe campaign for our visa services okay. to actually come to North America because they have increased the prices for doing that tremendously i think it used to be like three thousand dollars now it's ten thousand dollars jesus for each yeah, person crazy no 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 for that's... uh for the whole for the whole crew and oh, okay. band. So, so that includes okay that's still a lot I, that's I, 10 grand i i don't remember exactly what it is but i think it, it's for 10 to 15 people um jesus. within the touring company and that lasts for three years hmm. that seems like a major ripoff <laughs> 10 grand for three years i don't know i don't know who started it i think i think it was trump that initiated mm. the whole thing of raising the prices it probably had something to do with that we are coming there to seal the jobs or something like that i don't really yeah. know but uh, Those damn swedes coming over here and stealing all the american jobs <laughs> exactly exactly um it would be great though I mean, like as a musician, if we could have several different bands on different continents so that we did not want to have to travel, you know, like you had just right. have, that is probably what's going to have happen with Kiss now when they decide to stop. They're probably going to start like an official Kiss South America, uh, official Kiss Europe, etc. <laughs> I thought Kiss, I thought Kiss was over a long time ago. They're still going. I, 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 I think my wife was on the first like tour which were going to be the last tour and i think that was 99 oh yeah okay mm -hmm. so huh. yeah they've they, they've quit more times than i changed socks in my life <laughs> i think but yeah that's another story <laughs> they're still going that. strong and how old are they they're in yeah. their 80s right i have no idea i don't know how old they are yeah. i don't follow kiss at all honestly i never got into them mm. of course major respect for their, their success but from what i've seen of uh yeah what the fuck is his name gene um seems gene to have a bit of an attitude gene simmons yeah has a bit of an attitude on him I've seen some interviews <laughs> with uh yeah it was metal injection or something or one of those sites and he was just or blabber i think it was blabbermouth or something like that it wasn't very kind but you know i mean everybody has their their bad days and good days yeah of course of course but he's a he's a businessman of rang that uh, no no one can touch him on that i mean like that that guy has created something that will never be achieved again i think i mean like what a brand yeah and of kiss is yeah it's kiss, crazy kiss brand everything kiss brand lunch boxes and water bottles and yeah, anything they can get there and, yeah. Whatever. The best thing that they have ever sold, obviously, is air guitar strings for, you know, 10, 10 bucks. Oh, I didn't know about that. That's a genius yeah, idea. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's fantastic. The packaging is more valuable than the actual content, which they it, it doesn't contain anything. <laughs> hmm. Damn. That's, uh, I don't know if that's worse or better than... Uh, do, you, do, you, do you know about Bella Delphine? She was like an internet no. streamer. She uh she she sold her bath water and people were paying a lot of money for her bath water. She would just you, you there's no guarantee that she even bathed in the water, but she would put the water in a little jar, seal it up, and she was selling her bath water. And <laughs> men on the <laughs> internet were paying for this. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if that's better or worse. Uh, I wish something... I were, I wish I were fa I was famous because then I would do stuff like that in an instant. <laughs> And just yeah. and just give the money to someone that actually needed it, like save kids in in places on in the world, or you know save extinct uh, or you know not extinct but but uh, endangered animals or something like that. Yeah, 
there are a few people that can do that. I think Weird Al did something like that years ago. He had a soup spoon and he sold it for a lot of money. I don't remember how much it was, but he sold it on eBay. It was just a spoon, just a ladle for soup, and he sold it for, I don't even know, hundreds of thousands most likely. Or Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's but crazy, thought, yeah. Ta talking about that, it, it made me think of something. I mean, I'm asking you to kind of go back far, but coming up, I mean, I, I don't know when you actually started. Um, playing in bands and taking it seriously i mean probably what late 90s early 2000s yeah my first my, my my first endeavor in music business was my i think i've told someone this story before but it, it doesn't hurt to tell it again so uh, i was playing hockey back in the days right that was my main yeah. goal in life i wanted to become a, a professional hockey player but one day I think I was 15 or 16 years old. A friend of mine, he he was playing music and he had a band and he said that uh, they were searching for a singer. And I always loved metal music and I was a record collector and I had two uncles that were crazy. They had all the albums in the world. And I'm like, I don't know how many CDs they had, but they had everything. Uh, uh, so I, you know, fell into their footsteps and I did the same thing. So I, I started to work at a record store early on. I think I was like 15 years old. So instead of receiving payment in money, I got my payment in records, hmm. you know, as stupid as it could be, I, you know, like you think that, yeah, these are going to be valuable someday. Uh, but anyhow, uh, he, he was searching for a singer to his band. And I said, I'm a great singer. I can sing in your band. Uh, um, and he was like, oh, have you been singing for a long time? And I was, yeah, 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 I've been singing forever, man. Uh, <laughs> the only thing was that I had never sung in my whole life. But I went to their rehearsals. I, I the went confidence. to their rehearsals. Yeah, yeah, I had the confidence, absolutely. Uh, I went to their rehearsal space, and we started to play some cover songs. And I think, luckily for me, the PA that they had in their rehearsal room was cramped up to like 12 uh and no one heard what the other one were doing and they were pretty shitty themselves and i stuck but after the rehearsals were done after i, I got like this adrenaline boost and i was thinking like this was fun this was great um uh, but i was completely convinced that they were going to throw me away from there and uh, you know uh, ask me why did I lie that I could sing but they, instead they said that was great man wow <laughs> and all of a sudden I was in a band and from that moment on I decided that okay I'm gonna learn how to sing so I was actually in that rehearsal room and uh, when I did not practice hockey I was standing there just practicing 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 destroying my voice mm -hmm. over and over and over and over again so many I like till I figured it out I, I I'm like at one point, I just like, aha, uh -huh, now it hasn't hurt anymore. I must have done something right. And, right. you know, like I could probably have went to some professional guidance uh, where they have, would have told me this in 45 minutes. But for me, it took like two years. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, uh, I was confident that, that I was going to learn it at one point. Right. So have you ever taken any lessons at all during your career or is it you've just been kind of a more of self-taught? I took one lesson once and mm. that was when I was like 17 or something oh, okay. like that. You feel like you got and anything first, out of that? The first song that I got to sing was Phantom of the Opera. And uh, this th this feels cocky, but I thought it was too easy and too, uh, too uh, you know, boring. Mm. Uh, uh, I was so in it then I was practicing and practicing and practicing I have no idea how it sounded but I just thought that this is boring I don't learn anything here and it's not until many 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 years later when I listened to that song again uh, we're like okay this is tricky as fuck but uh, you know when uh, if I was 17 or 18 years old filled with confidence whatever mm. um you know, it was another, I, I was in a complete other mindset back then. And it was probably easier for me to sing that then than it is now when I'm 41. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. All right. Yeah. So you started out with confidence and then. I started you're... out with confidence and then my confidence like completely fucking dropped to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, okay. that is actually the brutal truth yes absolutely every time someone told me that you cannot do anything 
I would prove them wrong a thousand times over. Mm. Okay. I, 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 I was just like a little kid, you know, like, you're not allowed to go to bed because, like, you you have to stay up. I'm going to go to bed. Like, you know, re- reverse psychology, but the other way around. Mm. Um, um, do you understand what I'm trying to, like, have you ever had that yourself? Um, I mean, for me, for confidence, it was kind of a slow burn. It took a long time because just the way I grew up, I was never confident anywhere. You know, I was always like the shy kid. I was always in the back. Never had a lot of friends. I was always afraid of talking to people. I spent most of my life avoiding con- uh, talking to people. Like if I saw somebody okay. like, make eye contact, and they want to talk. I was like, Pew! I would be gone, you know, and try to avoid those situations. Cockro- <laughs> Cockroach shrine. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I was always trying. I was always hiding. That's that was my whole life. Was just hiding from people, hiding from the world, and uh, never really had confidence. I mean, it, there were moments here and there. But really, I mean, starting making YouTube videos in 2009, doing covers and, and putting myself out there, you know, I started learning how to how to do vocals, I guess, when I was like 15. I sang a little bit as a Same kid. Same as me, but, then. Yeah, I sang a little bit as a kid, but I didn't really take it too seriously. And then once I really started discovering music that I actually liked, that I chose, that, you know, spoke to me, I was about 15, 14, 15 years old. And then the first time I heard screaming in music, you know, around the same time, maybe 16. And I was like, wow, I want to do that. That sounds cool. And uh, I just found a way to mimic the voice and just made it stronger. And and doing YouTube videos, I mean, that kind of gave me confidence because that was something that I could point to and say, that's something that I that I can do. That's something that I did. People care about that. But it was always separate. It was like my YouTube stuff okay. and then it was my actual life where like I didn't have any confidence in my actual life. But then I'd go on YouTube and that was my persona. And I was like the metal guy and I was doing videos and people loved all that stuff. But I could I didn't talk about it outside of that. I didn't tell people about it. I was I was shy, you know, and also doing screaming vocals. I didn't I wasn't singing at the time. I was just doing screaming and any songs yeah. I had singing. I would just skip that part or I would try to sing it and not do it too well. And it, it took years to develop that once I found um, Camelot, actually, when I discovered Camelot in 2010 started singing along to Roy Khan. That's what helped me start developing my, my clean voice. So. It's so funny. It's so funny that you're telling that story because our, our paths are, are um, pretty similar. Mm. Uh, I mean, like, except for that you were, you know, keeping yourself in the back. I've always been an extroverted person that okay. I've always talked to everyone and you're like befriended people and, and stuff like that. But um I, I I've never felt secure anywhere else than than like when I was young. Uh, I had no self confidence whatsoever mm. around people in my class, around girls, around anything else than on the eyes. On the eyes, I had the most com. I knew that I was really good at what I was doing, and mm. you know, I I that, that, that like two two separate worlds. Right. And when it came to singing, it was not until maybe five years ago that I actually realized that, oh, not everyone can sing like mm. I do. Like I, I, and I've never ever been like uh, the kind of guy, look at me, look at me, look at me, just as you told, like you did your videos, but but you did that for you and right. and you did not brag about it, so to say. Yeah, um, I was just doing it for I've come to re- yeah. Yeah, exactly. But I've come to realize that in this business in, in, in these days, you need to be the kind of personality that pushes yourself to the point where you're telling people, mm-hmm. look at me, look at me. I've released a new video. I am great. You should look at me. I hate that behavior, but, but the modernized world and our society right now is like that to, to be able to like push through all the media that's out there. You need to, to be able to not only be good, you know, don't only have to have a, a good song. You also need to be like the best fucking PR agent for right. yourself. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's something I was thinking I was about gonna... today. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was just just to end it up. And, 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 and when you were saying Roy Khan, I had that was actually one of the first persons that I was actually uh, standing there in my rehearsal room. That was Michael, Michael Kiske. Um, and it was, um, what's his name again? I, 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 
uh, Joey Tempest. Uh, you know, I listened to a lot of Queen's Rock, but also Roy Khan. Uh, and you know, like I, I was standing there trying to mimic them. How do they do it? How how, mm. how do I manage just like not sound like them, but to sing like them without a yeah. strain? Um, so so um, yeah, our our paths paths are like. <laughs> Hmm. interesting yeah, yeah continue you were thinking about this today you said um yeah i just lost it it was a uh... oh yeah yeah about like clickbait i mean clickbait has become like the path like there's the way the youtube algorithm works everybody's kind Absolutely. of becoming the same it's like all the content is kind of bad it's it's it's, it's all adhering to the same formula and it's like there's one path to getting caught by the algorithm and if you don't follow that then you just fall into obscurity yeah and i was never yeah, that and, kind and, of but, person no yeah, I, was, I know but 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 we're talking about clickbait i fucking hate it when it comes to like i i i am a gamer side of, side of music i love to play games and uh, um, i play warzone a lot so yeah. some of the some of the creators that i follow um that are releasing warzone contents every time i get them up in my feed there's always something with this is my last video. I'm quitting yeah. Warsaw. Right. <laughs> and and then you don't look, you don't press the link. And one month later, the same content creator puts another video up, which more or less have the same headline. It's only meant for people to click on the thing. Why? I like this guy. He should not be able to stop. He can't stop. Yeah, I was I literally thinking about that this morning. There's a there's a guy on YouTube that I watch who does music reactions. And he had a video a few months ago, it was just titled leaving. And it was like a, a close up of his face. It looked like a serious video. I didn't even bother watching it because you see like after it, three months of brand new content, he's still posting yeah. videos every week. It's, it's just click, you know, and then you see musicians, they post things and they label their own video. Uh, amazing must see greatest guitar player plays the hardest solo of all time and it's like you <laughs> you're doing it you titled it that yourself exactly <laughs> like, how dare you my my titles for my videos have always been what it is this is the song this is what it is you know song yeah. title vocal cover end of story and it, yeah. it doesn't catch onto the algorithm i don't have millions of views but i'd rather do it that way than cheat and lie and I, I i i can sometimes i can sometimes be annoyed and angry and almost sad sometimes when i've made a cover of a song that i like on youtube and i know myself that i am doing a killer fucking performance no one could do this cover as good as i did it and it has four thousand views yeah and then some girl uh, or guy or whatever on the other side of the world has the same kind of video. They shoot it on their phone. It sounds like shit. It looks like shit, but they look good. They are yeah. like gorgeous the, human the, uh, beings, the, the, whatever. The thumbnails. It doesn't like matter this. if it's a boy or a girl, <laughs> but but you know they have something, and they have twenty million views on the same song, and everyone is commented like, "Oh, you're so talented, and you're so good." Like, hmm, have you seen my video? <laughs> you know, like, it, 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 it can annoy me sometimes because yeah. it, it, the modern society is also about like, it's not about talent anymore. It's about, you know, as you said, algorithms and, mm -hmm. and you, you know, how you look and how you present yourself. And, and it is what it is. I've always been humble as fuck when it comes to everything that I do and about other people and I start to realize my manager told me this the other day, you're way too humble. He said, you, mm. you should not stop being you as a person, but as, as, as an artist and, and as a creator, you need to like, you know, sharpen your elbows a little bit. And, and it's so hard. I, I believe yeah. to, to like just change that in an instant. I would never hurt anyone on my way up or, or down, but, mm -hmm. but I realized that, okay, to be able to like break through the noise, you you need to you know put that. If Harry Potter had an in, in, in what is it called invisible cloak or whatever, yeah, uh, you know you should put on your um, you know look at me cloak instead. Yeah. Right, the opposite of whatever the invisibility would be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you should put on your beacon, your shining lights. 
<laughs> be a lighthouse for Beacon yourself. Clothes. Yes. <laughs> mm. So I uh, drink every time you drink. Every time you take a sip, I take a sip. Mm. <laughs> okay. Let's start I wanted the to ask. <laughs> I wanted to ask because you mentioned being humble. Uh, I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot here, but and I'm also going to ask you to go back in time here. But was there ever a time that you can remember where you had an interaction with somebody? Uh, related to music and you kind of look back and you regret the way that you acted. Maybe you acted arrogant or you, you said something you, you wish you hadn't said. I mean, I'm not asking you to expose yourself here, but <laughs> can you think of anything, uh, you know, or maybe <laughs> early I'm on? Actually, yeah, but sometimes I'm actually really um, thankful for that. My memory sucks. I mean, <laughs> yeah. my, my, my long-term memory is gone. My, my uh, short-term memory. I, 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 I used to, um, to, to say that like let's say that me and my wife are having an argument uh, and i we go to bed when i wake up in the morning i completely forgot all about that we had a fight yesterday oh. uh, <laughs> uh, 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 and uh, you know for me it's just another day but i have a guy called david and he, he runs a site called jake e army uh, okay. and he is my memory because he has all memorabilia he has everything saved from you know the first thing that i ever recorded and like he huh. he buys things on ebay he, he he keeps track on lyrics he keeps track on what i did on a, you know he 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 saves all interview like he is uh you know and and jake e encyclopedia and uh, so hmm. sometimes when i i'm thinking about something like oh how was this i call him and i ask him <laughs> hey dude what did i do Wow. It's good to have a fan like um, that. I, I, I did one thing once that, that is actually a funny story. I, I wasn't mean to anyone or whatever, but, you know, James Michaels that sings in um, in 6 a.m. Okay. Yeah, I'm not familiar with the band at all, but I've heard of them. 6 a.m. You, you must have heard 6 a.m. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. It's a, I, uh, yeah. Okay. You know Mertley Crew? I know the name, yeah, and I'm I'm sure yeah, I know some know, of their songs. You, yeah, you, you know, you know, you know the bass player Nikki Six. I've heard the name, yes. <laughs> okay, come on. Okay, yeah. uh, your homework after um, this podcast today is to listen to uh, to Six AM. Anyway, okay. the singer, uh, the the sing the singer James, he's a fantastic singer, and um, I've always looked up to him because he he he's fantastic. He's also a fantastic songwriter. So uh, we played at Grass Pop, um, the, the festival, uh, and uh, they were there playing and I had the opportunity to, co to I saw him uh, in the catering. So I went up to him and I introduced myself and we have um, common friends. So I told him, you know, like just an icebreaker so that he would talk to me. Uh, and we were standing there talking to like, it was probably spent like 30 minutes together and and Olaf from my old band was was standing next uh, ne next to me. And after after we were done and we were walking away, he he looks at me like, "Hey, do you and um, Sack Wild has some kind of beef?" And I was like, "What the fuck are you talking about? Why are you talking about Sack Wild?" Like yeah, he was standing next to you all the time, and he tried to talk to you, but you just like <laughs> you know <laughs> pushed him away and like fuck off. I'm I'm talking to James here. <laughs> <laughs> but I was so into my conversation with like my one of my idols that, no that I, I I had no idea who was standing wow. next to me. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. So that was a funny story. But no, I I've probably behaved like an asshole to many people throughout my career. I mean, uh, but nothing that I remember. And if anyone else remember it, um, it's um, you know I I I, I hope I'm forgiven. My wife yeah. actually met some guy um, at a random bar once, and uh, I don't remember how it came to to talk about me. But she she said that well, that's my husband, and uh, oh, how could you be together with that fucking douchebag? He's the worst <laughs> guy in the world. <laughs> I was oh, like, Jesus. okay. <laughs> he was so serious. Apparently, I got some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So apparently, yeah. I got some haters out there, but you know who yeah. hasn't? I mean, like, yeah. it's always like that. Yeah, I've dealt with that too. You know, it's that's when you put yourself out there, you're gonna attract all kinds of people, and you know, that's happened. Yeah, I don't you know. care at all. I mean, like if people like me, they like me. I like, uh, of course, I, 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 uh, you know, you take that in and you're, you think it's fun, 
that people like me, but I never let that go to my head. And if people hate me and say, say that I'm the worst singer in the world, I'm like, okay, that's your opinion. Thank you. Mm. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, I think I've gotten to that point too, because I mean, I used to be really sensitive about YouTube comments because I, used, you know, I would I would get comments all day long. I, it's it's slowed down, but I used to post videos all the time, like you know, at least twice yeah. a week. So I was getting comments pouring in like all day, and they were always good. But then every once in a while, I get that one from some guy, and I would let that one affect me. I'll be like, man, I, I can't stand that that guy thinks this and he's wrong and i wish i could convince him that he's wrong and show him you know and it's here, it never works here's here, here's the thing i I'm, at, at one point in time i i i was like that as well but but you need to, like especially now in youtube days or or you know social media days you have to realize that that comment from that guy or girl maybe was at five o'clock in the night yeah. maybe he had he had too much to drink and uh, maybe he was ranting about he was angry at someone else and he just saw your video and he was angry and yeah. the day after he does not even remember that he posted that comment and so you know never let it go to your head because who fu who the fuck cares yeah it's gotten a lot or better that... he's or, or he, he's he's or her he or her is just one of these people that loves to go out and just rant on you know yeah. just being a troll yeah after being on the internet for so many years and you know this is one of the reasons why I, I kind of get off of social media and i don't go into comment sections anymore because it's just full of crap now i mean the way that people yeah. talk to each other the way that people talk about anything it just annoys me so much i don't like seeing people talk <laughs> in comments like anonymous people <laughs> you know it's, yeah. it's different in person but especially on facebook you know bands you know a lot of my favorite bands i follow them and it's just the comment section is just full of garbage you know I mean, I, I, I stopped agree. going I to I stopped going to Inflames comments because it's just even now, Jesper, Jesper, Jesper. It's like get the fuck <laughs> over it, you know. <laughs> Jesper left a long time ago. It's been over a decade. Kill Switch Engage, <laughs> Howard versus Jesse, Howard versus Jesse. It's like Howard left Kill Switch Engage in 2010. Like get the fuck over yeah. it. Yeah, you know everybody's moved on. But didn't he uh, even come back at one time? Did yeah, he, he did a, do something he did a song get... with them he did a song with yeah, them exactly and, uh... and i i think that that was fantastic that yeah, they cool. actually did that because that that is like proven or proving that you know hey things happen but we're still friends and you know we're helping each other out i mean like i love that yeah i mean howard uh, he's always been special to me i don't know how if you've ever met howard jones or had any interactions no. with him but uh i mean he's my he wife had... loves him though yeah i mean he had like a uh he went away for a while you know he after he left Kill Switch, um, sorry, yeah, yeah. after he left Kill Switch, I mean, he kind of disappeared for a while. He was going through some hard times. And then he started up the band that now turned into Light the Torch. Uh, I, forget okay. what they were, I forget what they were called before. They had a different name, but I, I didn't really I didn't really care for it that much. But then they came back with a new name, new energy. He had lost a bunch of weight. He looked super healthy. And seeing him again come back, in like 2018 i mean i just i felt emotional just hearing his voice again for the first time like super strong with these catchy choruses and it's cool man so i, I like i love to follow him nice you have to send that over to me so that i can yeah. listen to it he has such a uh unique voice and what the hell zoom running out of time already <laughs> yeah just started it just started yeah, a new okay. one yeah we have 10 minutes left that's all right zoom must have changed over the years they probably took advantage of covid to try to make more money <laughs> but, uh, how it goes but, but i mean like isn't it crazy how you could uh, you could have a service that uh, is being paid like okay you're allowed to have a 30 minute zoom call for free but otherwise you have to pay or you could just send another link for yeah. another 30 minutes. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's actually really stupid but yeah stupid. that's just me but we'll we'll get that going anyway i forgot what we were talking about now howard jones Anyway, we're here with Jake E. So let's talk about you. I was actually just listening to uh, the No Halos in Hell album. I was sitting there listening mm. to it because I haven't listened to that one as much as the first album. And I kind of regret that now because there are some great songs. I mean, you know that. You wrote Thank it. You. I, 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 <laughs> I, I, I know that the first album meant a lot to you because that was actually the reason why we, we know each other at the first, yeah. in, uh, the first place. And we were completely 
our, our minds were blown when we saw your video of, I think it was letters to myself. Yeah. Um, because it was just like, holy fuck. Um, I should call this guy to sing the songs instead. <laughs> that was, Thanks. that yeah. was the, like the best cover ever. Yeah. Oh, thank, so you. thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't no, know. But, but I... the, no, the, the, the No Halos in Hell uh, album, I haven't listened to it in a while either. I, I have to probably do that again now when when it's time to start touring. Sorry, I interrupted you. That's okay. Yeah, I, th I think my favorite song on that is still Bye Bye Forever. I love the chorus in that. It has such an attitude to it. Yeah, it has like a snarky Thank attitude. Thank you so much. Bye Bye Forever. It's cool. I, 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 I still don't understand. I mean, like, it must have, I, I blame COVID for that. But mm. when I wrote that song, I, I wrote that song under the condition that I need a hit song on this album. I need a song that is going to be like, the song from the album that everyone is going to talk about. Mm. Uh, so with that in my head, I wrote the song and I wrote the song like a day and no one's talking about it. No one yeah. heard it. And like, it's just like blew over people's head. And, and thank you for saying that because that is my favorite song um, um, except battle from within. But, but that, that is my favorite song because of reasons. Um and then out of my life became like the the hit song of the band, mm. which was not intended to be a hit song at all. It became right. like the 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 first the, the first song on the album, the first single, video, blah blah blah. Uh, you know, it's so weird. It was the same thing in Amaran. Um, like Drop Dead Cynical was never meant to be a single. We did not want to release it as mm. a single. All the label offices in the world say, said this is the single, and we were like no it's not and they were fighting and and all of a sudden it became like the the you know title track of of the band's career i think all all the way up to this day i don't think that they have any of their new songs that has streamed as much as that one hmm. I mean, like that NAA, works out. yeah i mean like the song were being played during intermissions in the nhl for over a year i mean like it was weird to watch NHL in Sweden and you know they were dropping the puck and they were playing da, 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 da. and I was like what the fuck <laughs> it's funny how that works out though because that, that is my experience too with any any band that I've worked with any album that we've put out or even YouTube any videos that I put out it's always the song on the album there's always one that I like the least I'm like okay that song is just like a throwaway I don't really care about that one I'm not connected to it that's the one that everybody always picks up on for some reason it's always yeah, one that i like isn't it weird least. yeah and then the one that isn't i expect I... to be the most popular one it doesn't really get a lot of attention and i i wish that you could figure out like the formula of that because then i would only write songs that i don't like <laughs> yeah <laughs> just gotta write bad songs that's all no but it's it's weird i don't know how it is with you but i mean like i throw away so many songs all the time i start mm -hmm. on songs and i'm like not happy with it and then uh, you know, all of a sudden someone finds it and they listen to it and say that this is fantastic. And, uh, you know, you don't hear it, but other people hear it. You know, it, it's it's weird. I think that it has to do that you're too, you're, you're way too invested in it yourself. It's hard to hear your own some, stuff objectively. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I think it's easier to get, I think it's easier to like songs that that writes themselves fast. Mm -hmm. If you understand, what I'm, I'm like, obviously, you never write a song in a day from from start to finish. But but I can write a song in a day sometimes where I have everything structured out. I have like the main riff. I have the the the, the verse, the, the pre chorus, chorus, the setup, solo, whatever. Here's the song. And then there's a lot of, you know, painting with a thin brush mm -hmm. uh, to fix things. Um, but but it's easier to like these songs because you, you you don't spend too much time. Last week I was was writing songs for like my upcoming solo stuff. And I spent like a week on it until, until I just like, I, I was done with the song, but I like, this sucks. I'm mm -hmm. not going to listen to this song for a couple of days now and go back to it and, and see what I think about it on Monday. Yeah, it's a little bit different because you have, well, I don't know if it's a luxury to you, but I mean, I, I would consider it a luxury that you have the ability to play instruments. So you can write songs from the ground up 
where from my experience yeah. i've always had to work with somebody who writes the base of the so of the song gives me a track and then i work from there so you know it's nothing's 100 percent my creation it's always a collaboration which is you know i i like it that way you know i but the problem for me is that i i can play a lot of instruments but i'm not good in with any of them i mean like well you're good enough to write I is what i mean yeah, I'm good enough to write, but you know, then then you have to see it like this. When I listen to my own demos, uh, you know, uh, this is not good enough, and I cannot really understand if it's the vocals, if it's the drum mm. programming of the drums, if it's the, the lousy guitar playing or the the bad keyboard arrangements or whatever. <laughs> and and now I'm humble again. Do you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to be, but, yeah. Yeah, but 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 then the magic comes when you show it to your bandmates, and you know they re-record your stuff, and all of a mm. sudden, like, yeah, now it sounds like I heard it in my head. Nice. Yeah, I mean, it's I've started day one of learning guitar many many times, and but never don't made do it. That. I mean, like, do, don't never do made that. it to day two. <laughs> No, but no, but here's the thing. I've never taken a course on guitar ever. The only way that I learned how to play guitar was to just sit with the guitar in my fucking hand. Yeah. I was sitting watching TV and just, like fiddling around and all of a sudden like, uh-huh, this note here uh, is connected to this one here. Mm. And, you know. You know, that's funny because that's the same way I learned how to sing. That's the way I learned how to do vocals, is just learning by doing it. And for some reason, yeah, I, didn't, exactly. I, didn't, I didn't apply that to any other skill. Like when I think of guitar, I'm like, man, I wish I could play guitar. I need to find lessons. I need to take lessons. I can't afford it. I think about playing piano and I'm, I'm thinking about taking lessons. But I mean, I taught myself how to do vocals. I mean, it took, you know, a long, yeah. long time. And I'm still learning, obviously. But yeah, I mean, why can't I do the same thing for anything else? It's just... Uh... No, but that is, the th that is a good thing now. My daughter, she's nine, and she just started to take piano classes. And I play the piano. I I I I, uh, I used to play the trumpet for seven years. So like oh, yeah. I, I know music. I know music theory, but I rarely use it because like I always write music on feeling. Uh, but mm -hmm. it was great now when she started to 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 play the piano because like when I I sit with her in her homework, I'm like freshing the theory up again because I had I have to read um, mm. and what's it called. Sheet music or yeah, sheet music. Yeah. Thank you, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, I, started, I was learning how to play trumpet too when I, when I was a kid. I, I learned for about a year. I took uh, some lessons and I was determined to play the trumpet. There was a, a gospel singer that I liked named Charles Billingsley that he would sing and then he would also he would put on his white glove and he would take out a silver trumpet and he would play along and I remember maybe it was a bugle or something. It was a trumpet or a bugle and I was like I want to okay. play like that. So I started learning it. And after a while, I was like, man, I, I don't like doing this. <laughs> I don't like the trumpet. It's, I'm never going to use it. <laughs> but it I, don't, I don't really want to play it, it. It's funny because uh, in Sweden here, we have something called like free musical school. Uh, so so it's completely free. So at the age of like six or seven or maybe it's later. But anyhow, when I was young, uh, you could then apply for which instruments that you wanted to play. And they were like, it's a lottery because wow. everyone wants to everyone wants to learn to play the guitar or piano or drums uh, uh, so you had to choose three different instruments i i choose a guitar drums and trumpet and to be honest i had no idea what trumpet even was oh. um and of course i got selected to come in to to play the trumpet hmm. but i stuck to it i hated it i even um, um i even engraved with a pencil clip um or a paper clip sorry uh trumpet is boring into the <laughs> <laughs> into the trumpet on the side oh, yeah. and it's still there till this day wow. uh, but i played in like big bands and stuff like that we were you know like marching the streets and like <laughs> oh, okay. uh, cool. i learned a lot I, I learned a lot by doing that uh obviously but it was boring as fuck but the reason why i stayed was that I had the, the best teacher that you could ever have. He was fantastic. Um, so so th th that was the instrument that I started with. And, and also playing the trumpet taught me so much. It taught me rhythm. It taught me uh, sheet music. And it taught me about like being musical in your, in your fucking head. So, so, so when I started to pick up the guitar, 
probably around like when I was 15 or something like that. It wasn't that far off from the trumpet because mm. like you you knew how things should sound. Something like it was easy for me to like, duh, 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 duh. Oh, okay, here it is. Then, then it was gotcha. all more a um, muscular thing to, to you know, like, and, and, you know, coordination between two hands. Still, I'm not a guitar player, but I can easily use my guitars to record songs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good skill. But I could, I, I, I would never stand on the stage playing a whole song with on a guitar standing up. I could still, I, I, I've always been having my guitar in my lap. So you know, gotcha. <laughs> huh. And, yeah. and 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 I'm endorsed by ESP guitars. So as I, <laughs> you know, I love your guitars, but they're, yeah. they're they're the best. But I well, still suck. You're not endorsed anymore <laughs> after this. <laughs> no, of course I am. Of course I am. <laughs> I, I I had to prove myself, uh, you know, uh, you know, send them a video when I was playing. Wow. <laughs> no, they, I don't think that they got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever you did worked. Yeah, exactly. I mean, wow. I'm humble. <laughs> so let's talk about your acting, because that's another thing that uh, I don't think uh, gets talked about a lot, because I, I know that's another passion of yours. Have you been working on anything lately? Is there any any acting project you're involved in? Yeah, I have two two films coming up um, that are going to be meant to be starting in the states uh, in the fall. Um, oh, so you're coming here? That yes. Cool. But first of all, I need to get my visa done yes. because you know, and as I told you in the beginning, it's really really expensive. Uh, so uh, I'm just working on that, and as soon as that is done, uh, I can finally start to take that up again. I. I I have a I have a story that no one knows, but that I think that I could tell everyone now. But I have to be I, I should probably leave some things out to not get sued. But anyway, um, during the pandemic, in the end of the pandemic, I or was it? I have to ask my wife. Was it during the? It was in the middle of the pandemic, right? The Netflix one. What I'm talking about. Acting. Oh yeah, yeah. That well, was in the end of the yeah. pandemic. Yeah, I, I, I asked the other oracle, my wife, that also knows <laughs> yeah. everything. But uh, you know, that, that 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 comes with the title wife. All of a sudden, you know, you could always like, where's my glasses? <laughs> 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 what did I think about yesterday? No, uh, <laughs> her name is not Alexa. She says, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but any, anyway. I, my agent, uh, my agent sends me an email one day during the pandemic. I think it was in September, uh, and he says that why haven't you responded to the this this audition? And I'm like, what audition? I haven't seen it, and I had missed an email that was a week earlier. Oh. Uh, so there's an audition, and I did because it was real. I was in a hurry. I I got the email at like three. I had to pick up the kids at four. I called my wife saying I apparently have an audition, so I have to go to the studio and and shoot it. And the deadline was at what was it, three p.m. Mm -hmm. uh, Los Angeles time. So I had to like send it in at midnight my time. Yeah. And um, so I had like four hours to rehearse this the, the 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 lines and also film it. And it was a four pager with monologue. Wow. Oh so it was God. fucking crazy. It was crazy. <laughs> anyway, I do it. I send it to my agent the day after I got the email back saying that yeah, they want you. Um and there's a lot of different questions that I have to fill in. And they also asked me about visa status. So I oh. opened my passport and I realized, well. Uh, it has expired, and this was like a, 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 the third biggest role in uh, in an upcoming Netflix series wow. uh, with really famous, like you know, top actor names that could have changed my whole fucking life. But uh, because of the visa status, and they were starting to film in a week, uh, mm. it was just like okay, bye bye. So I, I was at least when I get old, I could always tell the story about like when I was this close of making something. <laughs> yeah. funny. <laughs> almost made it <laughs> wow yeah That's pretty no, cool, but i have but... things i i i have things in the pipeline and uh you know i i've always loved the, the 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 movie scene and i always wanted to become an actor for real but 
when I was younger, I was too shy to actually even audition or even like try it out. Uh, it's terrifying to even think about. Yeah. You know, audition for acting. I couldn't even, oof, I can't imagine how nervous I was. And then, and then, then when I finally wanted to do it, I, got the music thing going on I mean, like all of a sudden i was gone 200 200 days of a year and and you know it was impossible to you know follow that up if you if you watch my videos you could clearly see that i have some asp <laughs> um, uh, aspiring things to yeah to, i was gonna to say go that you, you at least get to yeah. live that out through you know your music and your music Th through music and... videos exactly right. yeah it's good to have that. Oh, so that's fun. I also have a I, I also have a Swedish movie coming up. I, I hope that it's going to be released now in the beginning of next year. Um, but um, we'll we'll see. Uh, I, I I did a, a Swedish movie that is called One Percent: The Voice Within. Uh, one of the actors is David Labrava. He was in Sons of Anarchy. And, oh, okay. Wow. But the the film was like eighty five percent done, and then uh, you know some financing got lost. The director got cancer. Uh, he has been struggling to come back, and and uh, yeah, there there has been a lot of things going on. But I, ho I hopefully that movie will come out soon enough. So mm -hmm. the, the, it's gonna be a really really great great movie. It's a biker movie, and oh, I okay. look like a biker. But anyway, <laughs> you can play the part. Yeah, you can do it. It's not it's not too far of a stretch, you know. Metal guy and bike bikers are you know, pretty similar, I guess. Could yeah, be. exactly, we, exactly. But I, 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 I don't. Yeah, exactly. Leather, and I don't have any muscles. But that's uh, that's another yeah, thing. Yeah. That's all right. You don't have to have muscles to ride a bike. <laughs> How do those guys get those muscles anyway? They have muscles and they have beer guts. That's you know. That uh, comes with the beer, I guess. <laughs> yeah, sitting on your butt all day. <laughs> Although I do know about all about that. I mean, I've spent most of my life sitting on my butt, I think. I don't know about you. <laughs> then you can sit on a bike. I mean, like, yeah, you're casting. <laughs> yeah. There was a time when I wanted to have a bike, you know, and when you're young, motorcycles sound cool. And I think the older you get, the less uh, practical and the less, uh, less fun it sounds to own a bike. To me, I think of all the ways that I could easily die and that I would easily get hurt. Because I just know yeah, me. Yeah, that is the that is the thing because like uh, before i got kids i wanted to skydive and i wanted to have a motorcycle and blah 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 now everything that is you know a tiny bit dangerous i'm like nope i don't want to die because i got kids <laughs> yeah <laughs> i know i think about it with everything when i'm driving around and i see anybody make a move that i think is dangerous i'm like why the fuck yeah. would you do that that is so dangerous and i i get in like parent mode yeah you know like what if you hit a kid yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> i'm, so I'm the same my, my wife hates me when i'm driving because i'm always yelling at everyone else <laughs> <laughs> I used to have pretty bad road rage and uh, I worked through that. I don't have it anymore, but I used to have a driving job where I was on the road all day and there was a time constraint. So I was driving trucks yeah. for the post office and you had to be done within four hours because they only pay you for four hours. So if, if it took you four and a half or five hours to finish the route that day, you don't get paid for that last hour. So it was very stressful and I would get stuck on these roads behind these slow cars and it would make me so angry. I would actually yell at people. I got in shouting matches with people on the street one guy like threatened to, to, to shoot me one time and I was like, I bet you would, you dumb hick. Like I didn't realize how close I was <laughs> to getting shot. But uh, it took me getting three. I mean, like that, that is so funny because, because it's so funny because you're sitting there yelling at someone saying that this is so dangerous. But, yeah. but you know, uh, going up against some person that is 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 trying to kill you with a gun is equally yes. or more more dangerous right yeah i was i was tailgating him i was in a big truck full of mail he's in a jeep and i'm right behind him on his bumper which is terrible it's i mean it's so dangerous like in a moment i could have crushed him but i was i mean this is you know we're talking about 12 years ago or something like that so i was i was a lot younger and, and dumber but um then we got up to a red light and he was so pissed off that I was following him. He yells out of his window. He's like, come out here. I got something in my Jeep for you. And I was like, I bet you do, you dumb hick. And then I rolled up my window. I, was, I slung down. I was like, don't look at me. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that was so dangerous. But it took me getting three speeding tickets within, I think it was within a span of like a month. I think I got two speeding tickets in one day one time. And then I got a third one about a week later. I said, okay, I got to do something about this. So I took a, a defensive driving class because I had to. 
but I took the class and it actually did change the way that I think about things. And then also having kids once I had kids and uh, it changed a lot of, a lot of things. For yeah, me yeah too. of course. You know, all the, you I, see I a car with kids. A... Go ahead. Go ahead. I can continue. I was going to say, yeah, because once you have kids and you, you start seeing cars with children in them and then yes. you can't, you don't always know which car has kids in it. So I just, I just drive safe all the time. I stay behind cars. I don't tailgate. I don't speed. You know, I'm never in a hurry. I leave early and I take my time getting places and try to enjoy the drive. And it's a lot different. Yeah, than I used of course, to be. of course. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm always worried about, you know, intoxicated drivers or yeah. stuff like that. When we were on tour a couple of years ago, we actually, we got a, was it called VMA or whatever? It's a, you know, the, where they send out a warning throughout the radio uh, saying that one guy was speeding in the wrong lane on the freeway. And we were just like, oh, check the map. And we're like, it's on our road. So mm -hmm. we were like slowing down, going into the side. And, and I actually have a video on it. I posted it on Facebook because I, I started to film it because like mm -hmm. I knew that this guy is going to come soon. And um, he missed us. He was in the other lane. Uh, but a half an hour later, uh, we hear that that car had crashed into someone else. And uh, with, uh, you know. Yeah, and that, and someone that might have been there. I don't know. Might have been there I don't know. No, it was an old man. It was an old oh, man, apparently. Okay. So, right. so he was just confused. But confused exactly. But you know, it ended up in terrible fucking crash, and and yeah. that's crazy. I was gonna say I have a funny story about like the, the same as you had when you were like tailing someone. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine, he was driving with a with a truck, and he was behind like. He was in a Mercedes a Sprinter truck. There, you know, mm -hmm. the 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 front of the cars are like they go down in a, a specific way. Right. Anyway, he he comes behind. Um, I don't know how many foot it is in the states, but you know, like one of these really long trucks with like semi mm -hmm. loaders. Uh, the, and anyway, there's a red light. He can't stop because he's too close, and he bumps into the, tra the, the the trailer of the truck, and the truck obviously does not understand this at all because you don't feel that. Yeah, you don't. Feel he that. maybe hit it in you know, I don't know, ten miles an hour or something like that. Anyway, uh, <laughs> the red lights turn green, and my friend is stuck, so <laughs> he's like the third wheel in the back, and you know it takes like half a mile or something like that until like he he bumps <laughs> he's just getting dragged <laughs> he was getting uh, dragged exactly so he was scared, scared as fuck but <laughs> nothing happened but yeah man that is scary i mean i had a, a friend that uh he wasn't paying attention he looked down for a second he was driving he looked up crashed right into the back of a trailer like that and it just it just he his car just went under the truck and he was lucky enough to kind of fall backwards and everything went over him but he was literally under the trailer oh and, my uh, god so he, he hurt his leg really bad and his car was completely demolished but he was so lucky that he didn't get de decapitated i mean oof, that's oof. <laughs> that's scary stuff man driving you see scary. that on movie you, you, you see that on movies so yeah final destination so often uh, yeah yeah but the final destination thing yeah yeah, yeah. my me, me and my wife we are the same we, we cannot be behind a timber truck <laughs> yeah. i mean like whenever you are like i always pass them like okay no this is not gonna happen <laughs> yeah i uh, start thinking more and more about the ways you can die and how quickly it can be over it you can drive yourself crazy it's so easy it's so easy to die <laughs> it, but my my daughter sent me like this video the other day like uh, where they have this song dumb ways to die yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and then it was something happening at home where we were I, I i think that i was um making a joke with my wife or something and my my daughter comes like dumb way to die <laughs> <laughs> uh, kids are funny man Kids are really fun. I mean, I don't think we appreciate that until you have kids and you, you know, you, you actually know them very well. Kids are hilarious, aren't they? I don't know about <laughs> yeah, your kids, but yeah, kids I, are funny, man. Yeah, yeah, they're they're, they're hilarious. I, I, today, I actually was on a play date with my kids, um, uh, 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 some friends of ours, and 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 my son, he's four years old, and he and the the kid that we were visiting is three, and all of a sudden, the three year old comes out and 
he hangs with me for a bit and I ask him like, okay, where's my son? And he says, he need, he's in my room. Oh, yeah, but weren't you playing together? Yeah, but he could be in there for a bit. He needs that. <laughs> <laughs> he needs that. He needs to chill out, chill out, calm down. <laughs> and That's this funny. comes from a three-year-old with like a pacifier in his mouth. Like, <laughs> okay. Uh, that's why I love kids, man, because uh, the place I work now, I work in a place where I'm, I'm surrounded by kids, like mostly toddlers. And the thing that I love about kids is that they're so honest up to a certain age. Yeah. You know, before they before they learn how to lie, kids are pretty honest and they'll just say what they feel. They'll say what they think about you and they'll tell you not to hurt you, but just because that's they see it. You know, they'll look at you and be like, you have a big nose, you know, and it's it's hilarious. to me. <laughs> yeah. how honest, they are. I've had kids do that. And uh, oh, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, me too. It's it's hilarious. My daughter's 10 now. And uh, I, th I think our generation is a little different because we grew up with the internet. I know you're, you're a little bit older than me, but I mean, you grew up when you were still young when the internet was you know, kind of becoming mainstream. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was there. I was there when it happened. Uh, yeah. I, I was there when you had to drink two cups of coffee, coffee until you were actually connected to the internet. <laughs> like, yeah. And I remember, I remember when the modern modem uh, went from fourteen point four to twenty eight point eight, and all of a sudden, like it's so fast now. Oh yeah. <laughs> but I think the advantage of that. And back in the days, back in the days where like you you went into web page and like. There was a game that I used and... to play when we used to have dial up internet. There was a game I would play, and when I would move, I would have to move where I want the guy to go, I'd push the buttons, but it would take so long for him to actually move that I would get up, I would go do something else and come back, and then he will have walked. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I had to play this game. It was so slow. Yeah, what, what, game, what, what game was that? Oh man, it was it was some Lego game. It was called Lego Backlot. And it, it was Okay, like, and it, it, was, it, not even like, it was not even connected to the inter internet. No, it was. It was dial-up. I was playing it online. It was, ah, it was, okay, a, it was okay, an okay, online okay, game. Okay. It was like a 3D the game. But... That... Go ahead. Uh, no, continue. No, yeah, it was it was just some stupid Lego game. But my point was, uh, the growing up with the internet, our generation was the first that now I feel like me and my daughter, even though she's ten, I'm thirty two now. We are, I'm still updated on like the memes and stuff. You know, I still pay attention to that stuff. So I'm when too she, old. I'm too, I'm too old for that. I mean, like, I mean, so sometimes I do <laughs> feel that way. But she she has these TikToks and she she she's up to date on all the memes and stuff like that. And it's it, I feel like I can keep up. Where uh, you I think can it's keep up. Okay, okay. I you know, feel, but like my parents feel, have no idea. I feel exactly like my own parents, <laughs> okay. uh, not only towards my kids, but also towards my wife, because oh. my wife could send me things that I don't understand a fucking thing. <laughs> and, and it was up till recently where I called memes memes. Oh, <laughs> because I had no fucking <laughs> idea what it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and and she could be frustrated at me sometimes when, when she sends something that is apparently really funny, but I don't understand it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it gets that way a little bit. I mean, I, I don't get all of the humor, but, you know, there, there's some of it that, you know, I, I, at least I feel like I can relate to her more. So because I'm not on TikTok, I don't get TikTok. I don't I don't watch TikTok videos. I think most of them are, are kind of they're just. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't like the content. No, I, I'm not. The, I, I I started an account once. I I deleted the app, and I'm just like against everything that has to do with it from the back end of it. So I yeah, I, I decided I not to. I I decided not to use it. It's a major privacy concern, but I mean, my daughter's yeah. on it, and I'm not with her all the time. So I mean, I, I don't. I don't have a say in that. But she posts these TikToks, and some of them are just pr are pretty funny. That yeah, it's, it's it's surprising to see my daughter now because. You know, she's she's a person now. She's ten, but she's she acts like a teenager. And I realize as I get older, the the age group that I consider to be kids gets larger and larger. Where when I talk yeah. to my daughter who's ten, and then I go to work and I talk to one of my coworkers who's like seventeen or eighteen, I don't really notice much of a difference anymore in the way that they talk. I mean, no, 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 and then that, <laughs> that, that that is crazy in so many ways. But but I mean, like, look at my kids for example. I mean, like they're four and nine, and and they could work out i mean like the, the the youngest he hasn't tried out computers yet but my daughter she 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 does everything that, that you had to do with computers 
both of them understand iPads. They could, yeah. you know, fix everything on TV. They they are fluent in English, both of them. And it's not thanks to us. It's thanks to that. Um, yeah, we we just put their iPads on on English instead of Swedish. Yeah. But 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 it's it's it, it, they are so far ahead. I I remember when I started fourth grade and we had the first English lesson. I had never heard English before that. Oh wow! Uh, you, you know, mm-hmm. and you know, my son, he's not starting school until like a year, in, in a year and a half. And, and you know, being fluent in, in, a, in a second language when you start school is fantastic. Yeah. It's a, I mean, I don't know a second language. Uh, it would be very valuable to know one, but I don't. You know, I'm just... It's one of you're, those things. You're lazy. You're just I'm like... Lazy. You're, you're just like the guitar practice. Yeah, exactly. So, so <laughs> until we... Uh, t- till the next time we speak, I... I I uh, I hope that you speak a little, uh, at least um, some Swedish to with me, so that I could understand you. Yeah, that was a big problem when I was in Germany because I didn't prepare, I didn't learn any German. Oh yeah, you were in Germany for for how how long were you there? Three months. Total total it was four and a half months. First time I went it's three yeah. months, and then I went back for a month and a half. So I mean, I but didn't you pick like, up anything? Yeah, just like the the very common words, which just like please and thank you and hello, which is, hello is easy. It's just hello. It's the same thing. It's just with an A instead of an E. Hello. <laughs> and then, you know, just to say hello and goodbye to somebody at the grocery store when I'm checking out. But then they would ask me a question and I would have to look at Mick and say, uh, can you translate for me? And you have to step in and say, sorry, he's American. <laughs> and apologize. <laughs> but you the, know, the funny I... thing is that, that that if if you're if you're an English speaker and you are in Germany for that amount of time, you will figure out that it's actually pretty similar. There's a lot and a lot of words in German that are 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 similar to English. It's the same thing with Swedish. And 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 reasons like if you if you speak Swedish and you speak English, then it's really easy to understand German. And mm. the other way around, if you if you know two of these languages, you could pick the the third one together. Um, yeah, there would be times that Mick would be talking to one of his friends and they'd be speaking German to each other. And I wouldn't really understand what they were saying, but I can kind of pick up based on certain words that I understood or even just the emotion yeah. of how they were speaking. And I would respond to them and then Mick would go, see, you do understand German. I said, no, 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 I don't understand. <laughs> but I knew what you're talking about. So but about that, that, that is so funny when you're saying like what kind of emotions that they are having, yeah. because German is such a like brutal language in the way like ich liebe dich, yeah. which means I love you. Uh, but it sounds like I'm going to kill you. <laughs> right. Everything's very harsh. Yeah, yeah. So it always sounds like an argument when I don't know what they're saying. It sounds like they're arguing, but they're not. <laughs> very emotional. Yeah. And same thing in Finnish. Mina rakas tan zinua. I'm like, okay, yeah. don't hurt me. And that's also, I love you. It's <laughs> funny. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what English sounds like to somebody that doesn't speak English. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's a pretty soft language, isn't it? Mm. I feel and that so, way. I'm mean, like, yeah. when you get acquainted with new languages that you have never heard before, the hardest part for me is to to like to point out if it's an understandable language or not. Is if you could understand where the word starts and where they end. There, right. there's some languages in the world where it just sounds like someone has just said one word. They they're talking for twenty seconds, but <laughs> where, how many words did they say? Or, or was yeah. this with just one word together? Right. Uh, that is the hardest thing. Uh, like you, you need to have like some kind of pause in between, <laughs> so you so like can try to like hear it next time. They're say like German is easy in that way because like you really hear that. Okay, that was word. That was word. That was word. Now you can start to to, to you know like try to figure out what it was. Well, I think this is a good inspiration to me to start doing that because I'm at a good point uh, in my life where I'm glad we're talking now and, and not before because things have started looking up for me in just the last month or, or month and a half or two months. I don't know how long it's been now, but I'm I'm a lot more structured now and things are getting a lot more clear and I actually have like a daily routine of things that I do to better myself and I do it every morning and I, I'm forcing myself to read, which, you know, I stopped reading years ago. I just I just stopped doing it. And it was hard for me to sit oh, down because nice. my attention span is very, it's, it's, it's hard to do one thing. I have to be doing three things. You know, if I'm playing a game, yeah. I'm also playing a game on my phone at the same time. 
and I have to have music <laughs> yeah. on. You know, it's like there, I can't but that do is one AD- thing. <laughs> ADHD works that way, man. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So to, to sit down and make myself read one chapter of a book every morning, it's uh, I feel like that's going to be beneficial. But I think uh, learning a language, uh, that's something that would benefit me, especially with, I mean, because all of my good friends, all of my best friends are all European. They're all in Sweden. Yeah. They're all in Czech Republic and Austria and Germany and you know, I'm, I mean, I've made friends here since I moved back to North Carolina, but I don't have a lot of a lot of close friends here. So, I mean, the learning languages would obviously be beneficial to me. It's just a matter of doing it and sticking with it. And that's always that's it's it's it's, it's always been tough for me in the past. But I I'm going to be positive in this moment and say that I, I feel confident. Or, or, moving or forward. you just or, or you or you just join the special forces because then you're forced oh, to Jesus. learn a new language in 11 <laughs> months, in 11 months. Yeah. Well, yeah. you also have to do all the other stuff. <laughs> so you have Just to also... focus on the language and then get the fuck out of there. <laughs> yeah. I'll sh- somebody will shoot me in the foot <laughs> by accident. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever, no, what's, is... um, what's Sweden like as far as military service? Because I know uh, a lot of European countries, like you're forced, I know in Austria, like you're forced to join the military at a certain age and you have to do it for a certain amount of time. Was Is there anything like that in Sweden? Um... Yeah, but I I uh, I don't know what to say about that to be honest. Because at the certain situation that we have in the world right now, uh, I would rather not answer that question because okay. yeah. it's extremely sensitive uh, sensitive times right now, and especially in the, the um, uh, area that I'm in, uh, sure. you know, especially uh, due to the um, the Ukraine war. So, so um, I, I would just like, uh, you know, put the lid on and talking yeah. about any kind of, of things like, like that, because I don't know if I would say something that would, um, uh, you know, endanger something else or someone else would pick up, even though I don't think that I know anything else that can be seen on, um, on Wikipedia or that you could Google, but I just, I think that I should just shut the fuck up about things like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. Cause I know nothing about any of that stuff that's going on over there either. So it's, it's hard to keep up and, you know, the American news, it's you, you get what you get. So, uh, yeah. You guys probably know way more about that than we do. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. Yeah. I try not, I try not to, to listen to it too much cause it just makes me upset. I mean, I don't, I don't like war <laughs> and people that do like of war, I, I, don't, I don't hang out with those people, you know, those kind of like really right wing, like, yeah, blow them all up. No. Those are, I don't, I don't associate with those kind of people. So uh, that, that, that kind of people are always pro things, but they will not go there themselves. Exactly. I mean, like, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's easy to think about that stuff when it's not connected to you, but when there's, when it's happening on your streets, it changes, you know, your mindset, but when it's happening really far away, it's easy to be like, yeah, that's over there. You know, that's just those people, you know, they're, that's not me. Yeah. That's not my people. It's not my family. It's those people. I don't give a fuck about them. <laughs> uh, it's crazy. It's crazy. That's why I fucking hate it. I fucking hate it. And I just hope that it stops. And... Yeah. Let's talk about Syra again. Yeah. <laughs> so third album, I know it got kind of delayed and I know the the second album didn't really have, uh, it got kind of dampened by COVID. So you didn't really get to tour on yeah. it as much as you wanted to, which is a shame. But uh, the third album, I mean, what what's the update on that? Because I've heard a few different things that uh, have changed, obviously, in the timeline. Yeah, so it's done. The album is done. Oh, it is done. done. Okay. We, we, we released the first single already in, when was it? September last year. Yeah. And it Ready was to supposed rumble. to be it was supposed the album was supposed to be released in January, but when we were gonna tour for, because we went to Japan mm-hmm. and we did nine we did nine shows in Japan uh, in January, uh, and we were supposed to follow that tour up with the album, but for some reason we decided uh, to delay the release until like May, and then we decided to release it again because of you know the pandemic. There were so many things that were fucked up with the pandemic, but just to get a long story short, all festival bookings and stuff like that, blah, 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 uh, jitter, jitter. Um, all festivals were booked up. Then the pandemic came. And then they, you know, the next year after, they had the same bands as they were supposed to have 
uh, mm-hmm. 2020 or whenever it was 2019 and uh, then the pandemic was continuing so you know they moved it over again and uh, during the first one they had started already to like yeah okay the year after we've done like the real one we booked these bands so everything's like three four years away so it was impossible for us to get any decent festival shows and and you know the offers that we got for like let's say that you do one show for one week for a band that has members in four different countries or three different countries i don't remember where we live anymore but you know it, it was not viable economically uh, for us to do one shows we we declined a couple of, of festivals this summer because like we need to have at least two festivals the same week in europe or somewhere else mm. the, to to make any money out of it right uh, so we just decided then that as we're not having any shows this summer more or less we are just postponing the release so the release of the album is going to be straight after the summer instead okay and i think that is way better because then now we have time to focus on planning the tours planning festivals for next year and you know be busy uh, from you know whatever the, the summer and onwards okay yeah, I'm not keeping up with. But it's a really, media. it's a, it's, it's a really, it's a really good album. I'm really proud of it, and I, I, I can't wait for for people to actually hear it. The first yeah. single, the fir- it's going to be the second single, obviously, because Ready to Rumble has already been released. But let's, you know, it's a restart more or less. So, so the first single is going to come out soon. So we'll, we'll, we'll see what people think about it. Okay, uh, I don't know what's been revealed yet. So I mean, has has the album title been released? Or no, anything like that. No album art yet. Okay. So, no, no album uh, art. No, no title. No nothing. Okay. Uh, I hope. I hope the second that, single is the other song that I've heard. I'm not going to say the title, but the first one that you sent me. Yeah, I think I it. Is. I think I. I. I think it is. I think it is. Okay. Yes. I really love that song. Yeah, and I, that's the one that I, I've. I was talking about covering it, and I, I've asked you for the instrumental, and you obviously have a terrible memory. <laughs> so I'll remind no, you. No, 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 no. But, but <laughs> or you just can't. Uh, give it to I, you. I did. I did not send it to you because it was delayed. Remember? Right. Right. So, right. so we are going to do that. We are going to do yeah. that. Um, that would be great. Yeah, I would still love to do that. And uh, but it's just. I don't want to give too much away, but there, you know, the song literally ends on a high note. That's pretty, uh, yeah, <laughs> pretty tough. So that's the uh, part that's yeah. holding me back. But I, I can, I can manage. I'll, I'll find a way. I always find. Yeah, a way. you'll ma- you'll manage. And yeah. now when you're now when you're talking about it, it's not going to be that song. Oh, that, okay. That is going to be the first one. So it's another one. So I have to send you another one. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. That was probably also one of the reasons why I did not send it in the. Yeah, because I mean that was a while ago. Now I mean that was. Uh... I mean, we're talking about early last year that we were talking about that. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. So, I don't remember when it was, but yeah. Yeah, well, probably December, I think we were talking about that, you know. No, because it was when I was in Germany. So, I mean, it must have been in like April or May of last year. Oh, was it that far off? Yeah, so it's been a while. Because, I mean, the last I heard, the album was supposed to be done by September. And... uh so I know it got a little bit. Oh yeah, right? that, yeah. So, we've moved it a year. Yeah, yeah. But but I'm so glad to hear that it's done. So I'm looking forward to that. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean that's how I just I, hope that... it. I just hope yeah. it becomes a success now. That's hope so. Yeah, because I mean that's how I found you was through Syra. I mean like, I think I told you that I didn't know, I didn't even know that you were in Amaranth. I wasn't familiar with Amaranth. I was never, you know, I never really got into it that much um back in the day but then when cyrus started obviously i was a huge in flames fan so in the see yeah. jesper was starting something new and i didn't know who you were but then when i heard the first single i was like okay this is cool you know and then uh just the album ended up being on repeat everywhere that i went i would listen to it and uh, i think from the first album dark clarity was actually one of my favorites i loved that yeah. one a lot this the melody is really good but uh, i like that song i like that song but i hate to play that song live really why yeah, because it's so hard to sing. Oh, it is, it is hard to sing. Yeah, there's a reason why it's I really hard. <laughs> yeah, it's so hard to sing because, like, honest story, right? Mm. So, so when when after I left the Amaranth, and uh, you know, I felt. Oh, you mean it's hard to sing like emotionally, not hard to sing like. Uh, no, 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 no. I, it's hard to. It's hard. It's a difficult song, but I'm going to tell you the story. So, so okay. after I left Amaranth. In Amaranth, the, the, in the end, I just felt that 
I wasn't needed anymore because like I, I was mixed out of the picture all the fucking time. Okay. I am like, I, 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 I wasn't, I, 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 I weren't able to show off as like, Hey, I'm a great singer. You should listen to me too. And as we talked about before, I'm way too humble. <laughs> uh, but when, when I got the opportunity to make like the Syra album, I, I just felt that, okay, now I have to write songs where I like show my potential where i show this is jake e this is what jake e can do and you know uh so i i was completely investing everything that i had ever learned like okay i'm gonna make the hardest songs ever to sing and i never knew that we were gonna tour the world i mean like i had no idea if anyone were gonna care uh so I, I did songs like, you know, Heart Rage and Dark Clarity and, and even Letters to Myself is a hard song to sing. And, 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 you know, then you're standing there on the live set and you realize that, oh, so I have to sing these songs. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The so Dark Clarity, the reason why we rarely play that song live is because okay. like, uh, you know, having all these songs after each other uh, it just kills your voice. You 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 never get, get to breathe. And I also did the, um, the, the, the did the mistake of doing too much words coming after each other. No like breakdowns or you know like somewhere where you could like sip for air. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're just singing and singing and singing and it's get higher and higher and higher and higher. And and then directly after the chorus, there's another verse. <laughs> you know, like right, yeah. I had so, that. But, but but the more the more albums you release, the more of the oldies you could bring back because then you can mm. finally start to make a dynamic uh, uh, set list, which is great. Yeah. And you you can also kind of re um, find a way to sing these songs in a more of a live friendly way. I think. Yeah. I mean, I, I know a lot of singers that are able to do that. That you know they may not hit the high note the same way that they did, but they they find a way to to, to get through it or. Wherever, whatever the situation is, or they may skip a certain part, or have somebody else come up to the mic and sing a, a line to give them a chance to breathe, and whatever you. The problem do. with me is that I'm I'm too much of a perfectionist for that. I want it to sound like an album live. Yeah. And so I always want to make the the audience hear it as they remember it. It's it's sick. I I maybe have like five more years where my voice will you know be in the same shape and then, and then maybe i need to like reconsider <laughs> vince neil 2.0 here oh, i am no. <laughs> but that what you were talking about that is a skill that i had to uh be aware of too is writing songs that are you're able to sing live because i never considered that you know because everything i've ever done is online all my bands are in europe yeah. and i'm in america and i would just collaborate online so one of my other bands, C4TM, I don't know how familiar you are with them. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard it because it's you. Right. Okay. <laughs> hey, thanks. So uh, I never wrote songs with the intention of singing them live. So I like to show off and I want to do like the best that I can do. So yeah. I all these high notes and just intense screams and all this kinds of stuff. And when, uh, when I was in Germany the first time, I went to Vienna and actually met the band. And we had a little practice in, in the basement just to because we had we had actually had a live show planned at one point it was going to be like a big event i remember I, was, I remember yeah it's not happening now but so i went there to to practice with them and realized 10 seconds into the first song i am not in good shape i am not prepared for this i was like immediately like getting dizzy i was running out of breath i was just sweating and that was so uncomfortable and i was having hard, i was forgetting the, my own words to these songs that i wrote and i realized it's a very different thing you know that that I had never worked. I never worked that muscle of 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 singing live, and uh, so no, when exactly. I went, so when I went into the process of uh, writing the Dawn of Amber album in Germany, uh, these the songs are written a lot more singable. I'm doing uh, yeah. a different. I'm doing a different um, screaming style than I usually do. One that's a little bit more pulled back. But it's more of a classic sound. And then the singing is. I made. I mean, obviously, I'm in the studio with Mick. Every note that I hit is a note that I can hit, you know. There's yeah. no, there's there's no uh, cheating going on or anything like that. So, um, you know, th these songs are prepared for the possibility of maybe one day getting on a stage and singing them live, and I feel confident going in, going into that. 
Yeah, but I mean, I, 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 I've been thinking about the same way of the, the with the third Syrah album now. Mm -hmm. I've, I've been thinking exactly in the vein of that. And that is not, of course, there's some songs there that are hard as fuck to sing as well. But but it was actually great now when we were in Japan, because in Japan, we played the whole new album live oh, really? nine, nine days in a row. Wow. Uh, no, I'm lying. We we play them five days in a row, one day off, and four days in a row again, wow. together with the old songs. And uh, you know, we did ninety minutes uh, every day, and I really felt that it was great that the new songs and the new album is easier to sing. They're they're still hard mm. to sing, but they're easier in comparison with the other. Uh, That's good news uh, so. to me. Because it yeah. makes it easier yeah, that's for good. me to it's do great. covers. <laughs> yeah, because there are a lot of songs in this world that I wish that I could cover, but I just can't do it. So, yeah. But that but is the all... one, one of the things. One one of the favorite songs that I have ever done myself is the songs that I did from the Greatest Showman. And oh, okay. have you? I don't know if you saw them. They're on my YouTube channel. I think I. And yes, 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 yes. They're hard as hell to sing because they're mm -hmm. written for a female singer. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, 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 but, you know, I obviously sang everything, but, but, you know, trying to sing everything again in one take without missing notes. Yeah. It's tough. That that's crazy. I would never be able to do that. Yeah. I'm a big studio guy. I mean, I go line by line and sometimes word by word and just make sure everything is, you know, is perfect, but to, to sing all the way through, a song i mean I've, I've done it very rarely where i've done a, a live video where i actually sing the song straight start to finish all the way through and i have to really like it has to be good enough for me because i'm very picky about that kind of stuff like i like studio quality recordings and that's yeah me I, too me too me too and you know, i mean like i work in a studio eight hours a day and I, I sing every day and i mean like keep my voice in in shape but but every time it's you know time to tour again and and you're being on hiatus, I have to like sit there for eight hours and just sing all the songs over and over and over without you know stopping because you need to get your muscle memory back. You need to get right. your breathing back because like singing in a studio uh, is a different technique from singing live. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. In the studio, you always have like the great compressors and blah blah. You always hear yourself, and like there's no disturbance, there's no other noise coming in from everywhere. You always, you always have a great sound. But while when you're on tour, sometimes you don't even hear yourself. You just mm -hmm. have to go on muscle memory and know that okay, I don't hear myself, but it doesn't matter because I know that this is gonna sound good. Right. Yeah, I mean, be, I guess it would be like anything. I mean, uh, I, I have no experience playing live. You know, I did one live gig when I was 19. And it wasn't even like anything. It was just at a school, a high school. My friend wanted me to come sing a parent terror song with him. I feel like I did yeah. terrible. Everybody came up and said how great it was. I was like, this is shit. <laughs> that was just shit. <laughs> but that's my own, really what only... You should do... One thing that is actually, this is not a joke. I mean, like if you have no experience in the live field, uh, one thing would actually be to like go go to a karaoke place where mm. where 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 they do karaoke in front of an audience. Uh, mm. It's a big thing over here, but I don't know how it is in the states. Yeah, but I've done it a few times. Because it's always shitty monitoring and and stuff right. like that. And, and but it's a great practice event for yourself to get in. Yeah, I need to do that more because uh, I do. I have done karaoke a few times here, and uh, I do open mic every once in a while um, at the bar me and my dad go to. We play some Pink Floyd songs together. It's most of the same yeah. few songs, but that's that's my only experience. Just kind of playing in bars and stuff like that. And it's, yeah, it's but it's reasons. a great it's a great experience, uh, and the experience is also like mic technique and uh, and 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 also be able to not hear yourself but still you know like make a convincing uh, performance anyway right yeah there was one um one night i was doing karaoke there are two videos of it on my youtube and the other one i didn't put up because i was singing aerials by system of a down and Ooh. it sounded great to me at the time but when i listened to it i realized i was singing a completely different key than the song because i couldn't hear it 
So I thought Ooh, I was singing yeah, yeah. key the whole time, but it was completely off the whole thing. Every single note, <laughs> I was singing like a completely different tune. So I never posted it, but uh, yeah. I, I, mean, I, I did that one. I did that once. I don't know if you've ever heard my first band called Dreamland, but but we had a show once. We played a lot of, of shows back in the days, but my, our bass player had just gotten a brand new endorsement by, on, on bass guitars by... Um, this american brand and now i forgot it just because of that uh, um specter specter basis okay. um anyway he ordered a five string uh guitar we play a song called, called breaking the chains and it starts with a loose e just pumping on the guitar mm -hmm. uh, or the bass bum 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 and i start to sing over that mm -hmm. And the thing is that he was unused to having five strings, five string basses. He always played four strings and, you know, muscle memory. Again, he knows that uh, it's the up, it, it's the, it's the top string that you're supposed to play on. He plays that and that string is tuned in like D or something like that. Oh, yeah. And I start to sing in D then obviously, but uh, then comes the guitar that <laughs> are playing the main riff, which is then one whole step wrong. Oh, and yeah. The bass, the bass player, he does not figure this out. So he continues to play like this for the whole song. And I think it's up on YouTube. And, you know, it just sounds like horrible because I am there and I have two different keys and I don't know where to be. So, you know, <laughs> at one place, I'm like, okay, I'm, first I start here. I go over here. And then at one point, I'm like in between the two keys. <laughs> <laughs> My worst live experience ever in my oh, whole man. career and i well, hate youtube for that yeah i know good thing it's caught on video <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it'll never be forgotten <laughs> exactly yeah we're uh i was playing with my dad uh at an open mic just recently it was a couple weeks ago and we like to do a lot of pink floyd songs but you, you know pink floyd the mother yeah, yeah of Florida. course yeah so he's he's been playing that since he was a teenager he's playing all his life but i i think the way that he learned it he plays it a little bit lower he plays a little okay. bit of a lower key, but for some reason he had defaulted back to his teenage years and he started playing it in, in the regular higher key. And he also been drinking, you know, so he started playing it and after he gets to, to the middle of the first verse and he can't hit the note and he turns to me and just the look of panic on his face. He goes, it's too high. He looks right in my eyes. He's like, what do I do? And so he's starting to continue playing. So it gets to the part where, where I'm supposed to come in. So I start singing and he immediately misses the chord and I just go, nope. And I back off and then the song just died. We're just like, sorry, everybody. Sorry. I don't know what happened. <laughs> but that but so, is funny. And it's, that's caught on video too, but I don't think anybody will ever see that. But I yeah, remember the look of that. The look of panic in his eyes. He was just like, clickbait. What's what, going what, on? What, what, what were we talking about before? You know, like the clickbait thing. Guitar player uh, yeah. for uh, <laughs> Pink Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd song uh, missing um, catas catastrophic performance. Blah yeah. blah blah. And you get tons of tons of shows. Man, that would be good on TikTok. Yeah, I should get that video from my friend. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah, man. What else you got going on? I mean. Syra, yeah. I mean, I know you're a busy guy. You have other things going yeah. on besides that, you know. Yeah, I have, I have tons of things. I was just, uh, I was just doing the backup singer for the the Eurovision Song Contest with Smashing to Pieces. Uh, now in March, that was that was crazy. I just released a single with this band, How We End. Um, okay. I don't know if you saw that. No, it's, I'm not on uh, social media, so I'm really behind on things. It has to ah, pop okay, up on yeah, YouTube. It's, so, so, so it's a new band that I have together with uh, uh, Tom Nauman from uh, Primal Fear, uh, okay. Jen, uh, Jen Majora from, from, she used to be playing in Evanescence, and um, uh, Adel Larson, which is the backup, sing, backup drummer for Zyra when Alex can play, mm -hmm. uh, Diva Satanica from... Um, Oh, yeah, now she's on her own. She she used to play in um, some some Spanish uh, band before, and um, a, a guy called Mitch from um, Switzerland. Uh, so it's I have that going on, and and now the my full focus is on. Uh, there's something sounding in the background that I get, oh. uh, and. Uh, 
and then my full focus now is on Syra, obviously. Mm. And uh, and uh, I'm really looking forward to um, you know start finally finally starting this album cycle that has been prolonged for so long now. It's yeah. it's crazy. Uh, but uh, other than that, I just I also released a song with uh, Magnus Carlson's Free Fall uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, Mag- cool. Magnus Carlson, he he's the he's the the, the third uh, guitar player for, for Primal Fear, but he's also a songwriter. He writes oh, okay. a lot of songs for Frontiers music. Because when you say um, Magnus Carlson, I think of uh, the number one chess player in the world, Magnus Carlson. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, that's a yeah, different exactly. guy. Okay, yeah, that's the, that is a different guy. That's a different guy. I was actually watching a video with him uh, today when he he beat three people blindfolded. Uh, yeah, he was he's playing insane. against. Yeah, he's he's crazy. He's I don't know anything about chess, but I love watching him for some reason. It's yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so interesting. He's very entertaining. Did you did you did you ever see the Netflix show Queen's Gambit? No, but I've heard about it. Yeah, I need to Fantastic. watch it. Fantastic! If you like, if you like watching chess, you should watch that series. Yeah, it's interesting because I don't, I don't really know how to play chess, but watching really good players play it, it just blows my mind because they're they're twenty steps ahead. They already know yeah, what's yeah, going to yeah. happen. You know, as soon as the first move is made, they're like, "Oh, I won! <laughs> I already know how I'm yeah. going to win." <laughs> it, 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 it was so so fun to see this uh, this clip that I saw with Magnus Carlson because he 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 plays three three tables blindfolded. Someone says, um, "You know." A A one to uh, blah blah B two whatever, and and he, he sits there blindfolded and he has ha, he has to memorize mm. three different games at the same time and he says oh that's uh, that was a dare move or something like that and like the comment is just like <laughs> you know exactly what's going on he he already knows how to play the whole you, you know all the games simultaneously it's crazy. Mm. It's interesting to watch people that are like the best at what they do. So it's yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. That's what I feel. Are like you into I've ho- done... Are you are you into hockey? Are you into hockey at all? No, I'm not a sports guy at all. Really, I've never really gotten uh, into anything. I mean, I watch a little bit yeah. of fighting, like UFC and boxing, but I, I don't know any of the details. But yeah, I'm, I've never been a sports guy. So, so th- th- this is where our friendship ends. Then, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've actually never even been to a hockey game. You know, I've I've only been to a few games, like baseball games, when I was a kid. But I mean, I haven't seen any live sports. In that that is the problem. The states, obviously, because it's so crazy expensive to go watch yes. live 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 uh, live sports. It's uh, uh, I I told my wife when uh, you know Henrik Lundqvist, you know who that is, the the, the goalkeeper for New York. I, I'm a I'm a New York Rangers fan. Uh, Henrik Lundqvist is the um, one of the best goalies that has ever been into the sport and. And they were gonna hang his his jersey up in the roof in Madison Square Garden. And when I I heard about it, I just told my wife, I am gonna go there. Mm. Um, I don't I, I I don't care. I'm I'm gonna go. It's it's in it was January or something last year. And I go online to you know check the 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 tickets. The cheapest tickets, like you know, up in the ceiling somewhere, you know, where you know next to the doves, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> where they yeah. live uh was i think was seven hundred dollars damn uh, and and i was just like no uh i i'm not going but i really yeah. wanted to but really wanted to see but we saw it live instead so that, or, or or live we saw it on tv instead was what i was yeah, gonna right. say not the same um, thing but yeah it's almost just as good <laughs> yeah if you, if you pretend really hard yeah, but you know like crazy when when you know the flight over would be cheaper than the actual uh you know yeah. ticket that's crazy yeah i couldn't even imagine anybody i mean i've been poor my whole life so even even the thought of doing that is just out of the question <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's out of the question that's <laughs> it's always been my whole life is am i going to make it this month i don't know we'll find out <laughs> that's been my whole life so but i'm yeah. used to it now and i'm comfortable with that i'm comfortable being poor <laughs> i don't know what i would do yeah. if I had a lot of money i'd probably just give it all away you could just give it away to the way, yeah. But but you know, um, we we have something similar to to Powerball uh, that you got oh, in yeah. the states, uh, and uh, the tax on stupid people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's actually when you win that here, it's tax free. Uh, but uh, 
it it's usually up like like the 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 grand slam of it is usually around a hundred million dollars. Okay. Um, it's it's crazy, um, uh, and I daydream, you know, like what would I do if I won that? Hmm. I have no idea. <laughs> I mean, what what are your ideas? What would you do? I mean, yeah, quit quit everything, buy an island, and you know, tell everyone <laughs> to go fuck themselves. No, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that reminds me that you just said that because uh, as one of the biggest pieces of advice that I got from you, because I was having this problem with this guy that I was collaborating with, and I was having a little crisis moment of something that happened, and I said, I don't know how to deal with this. I don't know what to do about it. Let me talk to a professional. So I, I contacted yeah. you. And I called you and I told you the story of what happened. And you said that your first piece of advice to me was tell him to go fuck himself. <laughs> then, okay. <laughs> That's good advice. Did you do that? Did you do that? Uh, in, a, in a much nicer way. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. It was okay. a situation. Yeah. He was, he was, did, he was did, didn't I give, did, didn't I give you any like advice that you could actually use? <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, I think we talked about it a bit afterwards, but I mean, I think I knew what I needed to do, but I just wanted the confirmation that it was okay yeah, to, uh, to drop out of something that I didn't feel good about. Yeah. It doesn't sound like me to tell, to, to tell other people, to tell other people to go fuck, to fuck themselves. I, I would say well, that as, a, as something yeah. funny, obviously, but yeah. No, yeah. It was, it was a situation where the, the guy just, he, he wanted me to sing the song. He paid me to sing the song. He was very happy with what I did. And then he changed his mind the next day and said, Hey, can you just re-record everything real quick? You uh, sounding like you did nine years ago. Like you sent me a video of me nine yeah, years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Why don't yeah, you yeah, sound yeah, like that anymore? I, I, yeah. I, 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 re I remember that. I, I was like, sorry, that. my voice has changed in nine years. I don't sound like that anymore. He's like, can you just re-record it real quick? Sounding like that. I'm like, do you understand how yeah. much work this was? <laughs> so, the song never, you know, I ended up putting out the demo uh, just uh, on my own. He, it never got finished, but. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's Which sad. Is, yeah. It's fine. It's fine. But yeah, it's just, <laughs> that was, I wasn't expecting you to say that when I called you and I, because I, I, I contacted <laughs> you and I also reached out to Bjorn Strid because I figured he yeah. does this too, where he, he does vocals for people for money. You know, it's like. Yeah, of course. He, so he he must have. I'm sure that's happened to him before. It had to have yeah. happened to him before. So, but he, he's a busy guy. He never got back to me about it. So it's fine. Okay. Yeah, he's great. He's great. Yeah. He's a fantastic yeah. person. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's very nice. Any interactions I've had with him very limited, but you know, I, on the same album that you and I did a song together, I did a song with him, yeah. and uh, we had a little talk, and we became friends a little bit, and he started following stuff that I did. He would like my posts and. Sometimes he, yeah, he actually sent me a message a couple months ago apologizing that he doesn't talk to me more. I was like, that's, hey, <laughs> that's totally cool, man. I understand. You got a lot going on, you know? You're not required to be my friend. Yeah, he is busy of anyone. I mean, like, yeah. he, he is, he's on tour with Nightflight Orchestra, and then he's flying with, playing with Soy Work, uh, like, constantly, all, all the time. I and mean, it seems like every he's couple of weeks... Every couple of weeks, a new song comes out featuring Bjorn Strid. It's like he's constantly just putting stuff out. Yeah, yeah. Which I don't know if that's good or bad, but you know, it's it's good for him that he's making a living off of this, and that's you know. Yeah, of my, course, of course. Was of course. My you goal. need to pay your rent. Yeah. Yeah, that was always my my goal. I don't know what my goal is anymore, but because I find in my experience, anything that I've ever been paid for, like anything I took as a job musically, it's I've been very disconnected to it. And it's stuff that I wasn't really ever proud of, and. You know, it's it's always the okay. stuff that... Okay, uh, it's strange that you feel it that way because every time that I do a guest performance, I always try to up my game to 11 because I know that someone paid me to do this. They want well, me yeah, I do, to do Well, I do this. that as well. And, but it's, and, and, you know. and I, I, I also never uh, do any... It doesn't matter what people pay me. If it's a bad song, I will always say no. Um because I, I I I would never undersell my my own brand. Yeah. Uh, if I don't like it myself, it could be a bad song in someone else's ears. Obviously, that they they don't like the song, but, but I need to be able to stand behind the the song that I'm guesting on. Yeah, I mean, I, I usually try to do that i only accept things that i really think have good potential but you know i mean i'm, I'm not at that level yet you know the, a lot of the people that reach out to me they're 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 figuring things out for the first time you know and so it's 
sometimes I'll agree to something, but I have no idea if it's actually going to be produced well, if it's going to be mixed well. And then yeah. I hear the final product and I'm like, well, man, I kind of regret signing up for this, you know? But, yeah. Uh, but time is also, time is also money. And I mean, like, you, you need to be able in situations like that, it could be, it could be helpful. I mean, like, even if they're not paying you to do some, th something, it could be something that could actually be a stepping stone in your mm -hmm. career. But you should always be able in, 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 uh, in, to, to add your own terms into stuff that, okay, I'll do this. But if the final result is not to my liking, I should be able to just walk out and you're not allowed to use this stuff that yeah. I've done. Mm. Yeah, getting more confident in uh, setting boundaries. I mean, that's in every facet of our lives, not just music, but as I get older, yeah. discovering where my boundaries are and how to communicate those without being an asshole <laughs> is, <laughs> exactly. is the skill we need to learn. Yeah, both of us. Yeah, I think that's a good note to end it on. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, absolutely. I had a really fun time uh, talking to you again, and it's been s such a long time. So I I had a lot of fun. Great. Yeah, I'm glad you did this. I mean, we've been talking about it for a while, and uh, obviously, you know, we, we keep each other updated on things, but to actually sit down and talk to you is very nice. So thank you very yeah, much. Absolutely. All right. Thank you too, man. And um, yeah, we keep in touch. And um, what else was I going to say? Um, for for anyone that 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 is checking this um, pod out, um, make sure that you go and uh, listen to everything that Ryan has done, and also to everything that I've done. I guess that you're gonna post some links below, right? Yeah, I'm gonna post a link to your uh, what is it? GoFundMe? Is that what the what's that? Uh, that you too, used? exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I'll make if sure. If you I'll want to to, to help us a little bit with our 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 visa. Uh, problems that we're having and yeah because that would benefit me as well i want to get you guys in the states because i want to see you play live you know, i already so i i have i have already promised you to have a spot uh to sing with us live right okay yes yeah, so i didn't want to bring that up yeah. and put you on the spot but i'm glad you said that <laughs> <laughs> of course i will never forget that <laughs> okay good i will yes. i will never forget that i'm counting on and that, that day that someday. day that 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 day guys and girls i'm going to be in the audience and i'm going to see the whole show <laughs> when you were singing <laughs> oh yeah Maybe it's we'll going to be a... that 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 like like in the movie rockstar when i'm like just say i'm just going to take a piss and then i'll okay. disappear <laughs> <laughs> maybe one day uh, maybe one day there'll be uh dawn of amber opening up for syra or the points. other way around well yeah maybe we'll see be nice. Yeah, we'll yeah we're, we're we're shopping around for labels. I know. Uh, I think we'd be a good fit for nuclear blast. Or I know a lot of people are moving to atomic fire. That's like a newer one. That's I don't know if it's still new, but I, that's more of a newer one, kind of a branched yeah, it's off. A new one. But uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think we'd be a good fit. I mean, I don't know how it's going to work out, but I feel very confident in what we're doing. It's very professional. This is the most, most professional thing I've ever been involved in. You know, from my eyes, it seems professional, but I don't know. If of course it is. Of course yeah. it is. You're, wor you're working with guys uh, that has been in the game for, for a very, very long time. Yeah. So, I mean, once yeah. I got there and I got into a studio. Not to say that they're old. They're, they're just <laughs> they kid. are. They are. They're very, <laughs> yeah. I'm the youngest guy in the band. <laughs> I think our bass player is like 60. No, he's not 60, but yeah. <laughs> 16. 16, yeah. But, Everyone uh, in the music business is always 27. Yeah. Yeah. They've all been doing it for 30 years, but they're all young. They're only 30 years old, but they've been <laughs> yeah. doing it for 30 years. I've been doing exactly. this for 30 years. How old are you? I'm... Yeah, but that, that, we, we always only say that when we want to make a point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>